John here guys and today we're talking about NASA's Ingenuity helicopter that has been flying around on the surface of Mars. Now this is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. These last several weeks it's actually taken six flights which is about what they thought its entire mission would be but it's going ahead of schedule and we're going to be able to get extra flights. Now, one interesting thing is on the sixth flight, which is about what would be the last flight, there was an anomaly. What does that mean? Well, it means that it had trouble flying. If you've ever tried to fly a drone on your own, like this one that I built here, this racing drone, you know that if something goes wrong with the flight controller, with the sensors, with your piloting, you can get a lot of jitters, oscillations, and that means it was kind of pitching back and forth like this. Now, why was it doing that? We're gonna break down all of the things why and just how NASA's thinking ahead left enough room for it to be able to navigate home safely even with this anomalous flight and make it back and be ready for the next flight which will essentially be going beyond its original scope anyway. So really exciting stuff. So what happened? Well, the sixth mission was a lot like the other missions. It was supposed to rise to about 33 feet in the air. It was gonna go off one direction, go another direction, go another direction, kind of make a big circle, look around to see what's in the area to help make a path and also collect some data, mapping data, for the Mars rover itself to be able to navigate a little better. Very cool. Now on this particular one, as it was heading towards the last leg of that flight, it dropped a frame. It dropped an image frame. Now this copter, because Mars is so far away, you can't just control it with a little controller like this. It has to be able to fly autonomously, which means by itself. Now, in order for it to do this, it flies by images. And so it sees what's down below and then it calculates where it needs to go based on where it thinks it is. Now, when it dropped one frame of image, all of a sudden where it actually is in space was now one fraction of a second behind. So when it noticed it was in a different place than it thought it was, it was trying to correct that. It's funny, I was in a friend's Model 3 Tesla the other day with full self-driving package and as we were on a highway about to exit the car had a similar issue with the vision system it didn't know at the last second whether it should exit whether it should stay straight and it kind of jerked back and forth a few times a little violently uh, so my friend took control of the steering wheel and drove it away safely but it's a very similar issue where the vision system momentarily gets confused and of course just like the ingenuity the tesla didn't crash everything was totally fine but very interesting that those little hiccups can happen with visual systems and very interesting that you can get a similar one on a consumer product like a tesla almost space age technology so it would tilt, then it would see the actual image and try to say, oh no, I'm fine, and then go back. And then it kept doing this kind of thing back and forth, back and forth. Now, if that thing crashes on Mars, there's nobody around to walk over and tilt it back on its bottom so that it can fly again, and that would mean game over. Um, we have in the drone community what we call turtle mode. If you crash upside down, you can enable the props to spin backwards, but it will essentially flip you over like a turtle, and then you can fly some more. There's no turtle mode on Mars. So they had to be able to put a tune on this thing that would be able to fly itself home even under poor conditions like this. Now I generally keep my tunes on my drones fairly loose for that particular reason as well. You can see some of the props on this thing are pretty banged up. Now if you tuned it for maximum performance that would mean anytime you have any anomaly on the craft it's gonna fly terrible. It may even start burning up electronics. So what I do is I tune it much more conservatively so that I can still fly through some nasty props. It would be kind of like on your car. If you had less than ideal tires, 
uh, you're still generally going to be able to drive around okay as long as you're not trying to take it on a racetrack and punch it at the limits. So NASA knew that there was a possibility for this, programmed it in there so that it would be able to fly even under poor conditions. It was able to get itself back to the target area, land safely, and there's no mechanical damage that took place. That was just something that a glitch, if you will. So it should be able to fly many more times. Now, how is it getting this extra life? Well, the rover was expected to take a certain amount of time in order to be able to start its mission. It moved ahead of schedule. Now the battery on the Ingenuity Copter only lasts a certain amount of time. Yes, it does have some solar cells to charge it up, but the charge rate isn't going to mean that it can operate forever. At a certain point, there's just not going to be enough power to keep it going. The batteries are not going to be able to last to infinity, but because it was able to start its mission early, those batteries are not as depleted as they would have thought. The time is up, so they're going to be able to get extra flights. NASA, just like they did on Star Trek, always tends to under-promise and hopefully over-deliver. You didn't tell them how long it would really take, did you? Well, of course I did. Oh, laddie, you've got a lot to learn if you want people to think of you as a miracle worker. So a little recipe for you kids out there that may be joining the STEM community in a few years. Um, so great job. This is a perfect example of how I actually do the same type of techniques on my racing drone builds in order to have a conservative tune so that it can still fly and get back to where I need it to go under ideal conditions. Yes, I do sacrifice a little bit of performance, but my goal is to always get the craft back safely. That was NASA's goal as well. And so great job on these guys thinking ahead and making sure that it could still fly under those conditions. Can you imagine the people that worked on this project though, the millions and millions of dollars this thing costs and seeing it freak out like that? That must've been terrible. Anybody that's opened up a drone on Christmas knows because the day after Christmas is known as National Lost Drone Day because people that don't know how to fly them are going, you know, probably the same kind of thing. And that fear of crashing your new Christmas present. Imagine if your Christmas present was on Mars. What do you think in the comments, guys? Do you like to see more of this NASA based footage? Really cool stuff. Really awesome job by all of those NASA engineers. And really cool how. Some of the guys that build these things in the community, this is a drone based building channel. So if you want to know more about building your own drones, subscribe here. Uh, really cool how some of those things apply even at the highest levels of science. Thanks, guys.